In 1917, a man by the name of William Still patented a design for an engine that was both diesel and steam-powered. The basic idea was simple. You have a diesel engine running alongside a boiler. The boiler would use waste heat from the diesel engine as well as fuel if needed. The intention was to have the diesel engine run as the main source of power, and have the boiler power a steam engine in the event the diesel one gets overloaded or needs an extra boost in performance. The engine was mostly intended for static use, but of course, someone had the bright idea to try having it power a locomotive. The engine was built in 1926 by Kitson and Company. The basic idea was that steam engines offered a high starting torque while diesel engines offered a high fuel efficiency, and so combining the two seemed like a perfectly reasonable idea, especially as diesel locomotives were still a fairly new technology and hadn't quite been mastered yet. The engine had a 262 wheel configuration and an unusual cylinder arrangement, with the cylinders capable of being powered by both steam and diesel. The boiler was fairly small compared to most contemporary locomotives, but this was made up for with the diesel engine fitted below it. The engine would start by using steam power to get it moving, before starting the diesel injectors and shutting off steam once it hit about 5 miles an hour. The waste heat from the diesel engine helped maintain the pressure in the boiler in the event the extra power was needed. The engine was used by the LNER in 1928 for running goods trains around Leek and York, and was noted for its ability to tackle hills well, once managing to re start a heavy train after stopping on a gradient of 1 in 33. By 1933, it was proven to be reliable enough for daily goods work around York Shed, and regularly took goods to and from dairy coats. Along with its impressive acceleration, it was also very efficient in terms of fuel usage, using roughly a fifth of the fuel a typical coal-burning engine would. The engine, however, wasn't all good news. For an engine of its size, it had a relatively low power output. Not a huge problem for the work it was given, and something that would have been improved if the design was sold commercially, but when engines of the same size can pull bigger loads, it's never a good look. On top of this, the running costs of the locomotive constantly depended on the price difference between coal and oil, and as the engine was powered with diesel while coal was the more abundant fuel source at the time, it made running costs fluctuate significantly. Though the design was successful, by 1934, Kitson & Co was in very poor financial condition, largely thanks to spending nearly 10 years testing the locomotive's design, and as a result, had to abandon the project. They took the engine back and eventually scrapped it in 1935. This, however, wasn't the only attempt made at making a still-style locomotive. In 1925, a design was patented in Switzerland for a steam-diesel hybrid, and another in the US in 1954, though it's unknown if either of these designs went any further than the drawing board. The Soviet Union also tried experimenting with a diesel-steam hybrid. Three different locomotives were produced between 1939 and 1946, each with varying degrees of success. The first was built in 1939, and while it was reliable enough to run passenger services, it was very heavy, rode hard on the rails, and was prone to cracking its cylinders, eventually being put into storage in 1948. The second was reported to only properly function while travelling at about 25 to 30 kilometres an hour, as going any faster would cause premature combustion of the gases used in the engine. It was abandoned in 1941 due to the outbreak of World War II in Soviet territory. The third and final one has little information about its design or performance, other than it was built in 1946, put into storage in 1948, and was reportedly almost a complete disaster. Perhaps then the still design came at a rather unfortunate time. While being highly fuel efficient and possessing a very impressive ability to start any train it was given, its dependency on a fuel that wasn't commonplace until a few decades later, and its low power output for an engine of its size stalled its development for long enough that it lost its chance to make it big. Maybe it was too ahead of its time, maybe it was just built in the wrong place, who knows. One thing is for sure though, it was certainly one of a kind. Subscribe for more.